Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. So Seiko new releases kind of still flowing through. Um, these did come in a while ago with the uh, Arnie's and um, some of the other watches, that the, the presages that I showed you a while back. Uh, I just never got around to showing you uh, these new solar divers, uh, 42 millimeter, about 42. 42 millimeter solar divers that have come into the store. So I want to do a little twisty turny and show them to you up close. Uh, my own wrist check on <laughs> this wrist. I'm still wearing the uh, Islander GMT. It is ace. I'll tell you more about it as it gets closer to its release. It is a Salita based uh, SW330-2 movement uh, with 56 hour power reserve, 20,000 piece per hour. Really good stuff going on there. Sapphire crystal, sapphire bezel, glows great. Beautiful GMT hand, it's like a little airplane. Applied numbers, uh, 12369, date tucked away between the four and five. Color match to the dial. Black dial, blue dial. I keep watching the viewfinder to make sure I'm not popping up too high. Uh, black dial, blue dial, gray dial. Beautiful stainless steel bracelet. Uh, so those should be coming out about a week or so. I'm, I'm still finalizing some stuff, including the price. It will be the most premium Islander that has ever been around, uh, just so you know. So don't expect it to be 300 bucks or 400 bucks like some of the other releases have. On my other wrist, I'm sorry for all the talking, is my Abalone Monster, which is what, what did sell out. Um, I will do them again, uh, sold out crazy quick. That is enough yapping. Let's get on with uh, the Seikos. Okay, so Seiko Solar Divers. I have I have three to show you. As I said, I'll invite a fourth friend to the party in a minute, but he's been around for a couple of years. Um, but kind of like the, I guess this is kind of like the evolution of where the product line has been. Two on bracelet, one on rubber. Uh, I will just kind of start, although the dial on this one is gorgeous blue. I will start with, um, I guess what we're going to call the base model, if you will. Plain black. This is SNE5, 589. And just so you can see the price right there, it is 525. Okay, so it is, uh, it's 42.8 in diameter. Okay, so it's kind of a, a, around the sizing of an SKX. But because it is solar or quartz, it is only 10.7 thick. So it is thinner than 11 millimeters. It is 49 on the lug tip to lug tip, and because they use uh, hollow end links, they are actually negative end links. You'll see uh, holes for easy strap changes right there. The case back is a solid, oops, sol solid screw down with the Seiko Wave. Okay, because this is an ISO certified diver, ISO 6425 certified diver. Screw down crown. Sapphire Crystal. So that's where these get a little bit of an upgrade from the, f the fourth one I'm going to show you at the end. Again, just so you can see kind of where this has all come from. But this is a Sapphire Crystal now. Uh, so definitely going upscale or up market a little bit, uh, giving people more of the things that they ask for. Um, the bezel itself is not uh, ceramic, but the crystal itself is indeed sapphire. Uh, 200 meters water resistance, I said, is 167 grams on the bracelet. And there's dirt on my glove. So this guy is powered by um, Seiko's V157 movement. So it is a quartz movement, which means it runs on a quartz oscillator. But instead of being powered by a disposable battery, it is powered by a rechargeable solar cell or solar battery that is inside the watch. The watch is charged via sunlight or office light or studio lighting. Uh, and the dial itself, though, doesn't look it. Um, Try to see if you can see any lines in it. Sometimes you can if you hold them off angle. The dial is semi-transparent, so a little bit of light does peek through, and there's a solar cell. That's where that cell comes in, or I, that's what I meant to say battery before. Uh, it's a little receptor. It takes the sunlight and tr uh, the, or the daylight or the office light and translates it into battery power. Um, let's see. So it uses Luma Bright. We have nice brushed silver hands, nice applied markers. There's a date window at the three. The V157 movement will give you 10 hours, uh, 10 hours, 10 months of power reserve when it's fully charged. It is a screw down crown. You do have the red witness line so you know if the crown is, is out. But two clicks out will indeed change the time. One click will do the date. The bezel is sloped, okay, 
and it's got a nice edging. It's 120 click unidirectional ratcheting bezel. Nice, um, what's it called? Nice resistance to turning. Uh, just a great looking all around solar diver. Grab and go quartz uh, and true grab and go is solar, especially with a 10 month power reserve. So you have this guy and then they also do it, same black dial, but now we're looking at a Pepsi insert. I'll go through the bracelet on this one. I'm sorry I didn't do it on the other. So black dial still, um, but a nice red and blue Pepsi insert. Uh, it does have a little bit of a sheen to it. I would say more so than the SKX009 uh, ever did. It's definitely a more vibrant red and blue. Uh, I think it looks it looks really nice. Um, so the bracelet is it's solid link. Okay, uh, it is held though with. Let's see if I can focus. I believe it is pins and collars. I'm sorry. It is a hollow end link. Uh, I'm guessing if these models prove popular enough, I'll likely make a bracelet for them. It's not in, not in process yet. Uh, it is a flip block Seiko class with four positions of micro adjust and a diver's extension located right over there. Uh, so this is uh, SNE 591 at the same 525. And the one that, I don't know, the dial that really gets me is on this SNE 5, what's this, 89? 593, I'm sorry. So this one's 495 because it's a little bit cheaper. Um, and it weighs 93 grams because it's on rubber. But it's a beautiful sunburst blue dial if you could pick it up there. Um, I think you can, but I will just change the ISO just a bit to try to bring it out a little bit more. And also uh, a matching a matching sunburst blue insert. And this watch just works, especially with the red, there we go, with the red line on the crown and then the red seconds hand, everything on this. It looks really nice. A better case back view for you. There you go. Same Seiko wave. Uh, the width is 20 millimeters on the lugs. It is a nice branded Seiko keeper. Uh, this is like the, um, like the like the RO2C straps that we sell. Uh, you may notice, may have noticed that Seiko accessories have gone up incredibly, incredibly high in price. The straps are now, straps I used to sell for like 50 bucks are now well over 100. I don't know what happened. Well, I mean, obviously my price, my price is on stuff more than doubled, like overnight. I'm not sure why, but these things, they happened. Uh, I don't know if they're looking to gouge or I'm not quite sure. Uh, so see, so that's that. So the last one I want to go over though, and this is, and this is one of the, this is the older watch. This is the SNE 549. This guy, it's the Patty version. Uh, retail is, I'm looking for it, is 395. So from 395, um, this is years old. They've gone to 525 on the Sapphire version. Uh, but this is a very popular watch. The crown is out, so it's not running. There you go. Very popular version, but this is kind of the, the, I guess, the evolution of the product line. You can see where it came from. This was a very nice looking watch. They made an, uh, an IP plated watch like this, black and yellow, years ago. Um, that one, this was the only one that survived um, the whole evolution of the line. But just want to you know, show you this one so you know what's around. It is considerably cheaper. Um, because it's been around for so long, it's prices down to like 300 bucks or so. Um, this is a consistent seller for us. Sell loads of them. I'm sure by the time the video comes out, it'll probably be sold out because I just checked stock before I filmed and there weren't many left, but I'll get them again. Um, highly recommend this watch. Uh, let's see. So let's, um, let's flip out the lights and uh, see some loom. So it glows great with Seiko's Luma Bright. Very easy to tell the time. You could see, uh, yeah, it's roughly 10, 15 uh, with the bezel pip. You wouldn't expect, uh, from a Seiko, right? You wouldn't expect anything less on the loom. So here it is on my six and three quarter inch wrist, 42.8 on the diameter, uh, 49 on the lug tip to lug tip. It fits me just fine. That thickness though, or thinness is awesome. Makes it super comfortable, very well balanced. Plenty, plenty, blah, plenty of room for friends on the bracelet. Looks really nice. And don't forget, scratch resistant sapphire crystal. Is it worth $100? 
as a uh, roughly $100 upgrade. Um, I've been saying this for years that people, uh, people have said, oh, why doesn't Seiko just put Sapphire on their watches? And I've always said it's because it's going to increase the price by a lot. People don't realize that, you know, when you make a change in a watch that makes it more expensive, but that change is done all the way at the, ma I'm pointing back, <laughs> all the way back at the manufacturer point, uh, and then you have to build in all the margins that everyone makes along the way. And I've done videos on, you know, why watches cost what they do. You know, you have the, from the manufacturer to the distributor, um, probably to another distributor, and then to a retailer. You have, you know, these triple or quadruple, uh, I guess, kind of, you know, markups that you get, and everyone's making their penny along the way. When you add a sapphire crystal, um, that you think only should cost like 40 bucks or 50 bucks, that's what you can buy it from, it drastically increases the price. And that is, uh, that's certainly gonna do it. This has been Mark from LongNightWatch.com showing you a couple of new Seiko Solar Divers. Please like, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions or comments, you can put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.